Hello, this is Colleen with Design to Value Online Art School. Today we're going to talk about a graphite design before you do your painting and why I feel it's so important. Um, the nice thing about a graphite design of a painting that you want to uh, paint is it also gives you an additional item that you can sell once you've used your workable fixative, which I use the Krylon 1306. This is something that you want to spray on your graphite once it's completed. Take it outside. I actually do mine in my garage so that in case it's windy, they don't blow all over. And, but I have my garage door open so that there's a airflow in there. And this works really well. It, it keeps the graphite from smudging. And then you have an item that you can sell. So that's your Krylon Workable Fixative 1306. I, let's start with the paper because that, there's a couple different kinds that you can buy. There's probably many different kinds that you can buy. These are just two examples. I have a Canson Bristol Smooth. I like to use this with florals. It gives me a smoother look to the petals. And then this is the one we're going to use today. It's the Vellum Bristol Pad. Um, I think I got this right at Hobby Lobby. It has a little bit of a texture to it, so I like that quite a bit. So those are those. And then we have pencils. Now you can do a straight charcoal pencil. These are hard charcoal pencils. There's no outside wood. It is strictly a charcoal, a piece of charcoal and a long pencil shape. So that's an option if you want to do those. Another option, which is what I use the most, is my pencils. I have a, a whole set here that ranges from F to B to H, 6B, all the way down to uh, B, and then looks like 4B, all the way down to B, and then there's an HB. And the F is nice. This is the pencil that I recommend that you use right on your watercolor paper because it's the easiest to erase. Uh, it's not going to give you a hard time when you go to erase your design. So if you're going to be sketching right on your watercolor paper, use your F pencil. That's a good tip for you. We have a Jelly Roll white pen in case you need to add white in, but your erasers really work well for that. you got your big eraser for the background to keep your background nice and clean. I do have a, a pen eraser here and then a smaller pen here. Let's talk about blending tools. First and foremost is your Kleenex uh, for larger areas like backgrounds or ground areas where things are sitting on the ground. So that's important. You want to have that around. And your blending tool that's uh, fabulous is the Tortillans. They're um, a wound paper, but they're not a really tightly wound paper. Pick these right up at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, Dick Blick, any of those locations. And then this one is a blending stick. This is paper as well. However, it's very tight, much tighter than these, lasts much longer than these, a little bit harder to find, uh, but I like those too. And then you, I just no, always have a normal pencil around. I do wear a glove when I'm doing a graphite because I do not want to smudge the background. And then a couple um, things that are nice, for example, this is my hake brush that I use just strictly for graphite drawing. For when I'm erasing, I can get rid of that erasing mess without smudging the graphite. So that works really well. I always have a fabulous pencil sharpener around. This one happens to be a Westcott uh, Eye Point Evolution. Very nice. It's just a little battery operated one, but it really works well. And then I have an erasing guide. So if there's something on my design that I want to erase and it's going to be difficult to get at or I just want a little dot or whatever, like the eye of a bird or something, this comes in handy. So that's a good tool to have. And then this I wouldn't be without. It's called a grayscale value finder. And you've got all your different values. 
And if you're looking at a design and you're wondering what the value is for that, you can pull this out and check it, looking through here and matching it up to that value. And so that works out really well. And then since I just had eye surgery a little over a week ago now, um, I use a magnifying glass. And it's just something that I always have around. i got a feeling I'll be using it the rest of my life. But let's look at the design we're going to be talking about today. This is a picture that I captured from Pixabay. And I really like, and I enlarged it, you can probably tell it's pretty grainy. Um, I really like the design of the flower bud. And I like all the little stem pieces. Uh, we probably won't be doing a background. We'd just be concentrating on the bud itself. This is the design outline that I made. And then I did put it on, traced it back onto the paper for you. So we're good to go there. But let me give you some examples of some of the, set this over here, uh, ones I've been working on myself at home. Here's a little bird that I got off of Onsplash. They're both um, websites. Pixabay and, and Onsplash are websites that you can download the pictures. They're free downloads. Some of them you can buy if you you know um, if you want to. There's one that you really want to do that you have to buy. Go for it. Um, but I really like him. He'll be something I'll do on Patreon and YouTube, and you'll get to see me do that. And then here's a really beautiful floral. This is actually blues and burgundies. This one is also, I think I got this one on Pixabay. Now this is a uh, picture of some pumpkins that I took at the house that I used to live in. Actually, the little gas station next door. Um, had these for sale, and I snapped a bunch of pictures, and I really liked this with the brick background. It's it's the reds, and it really brings out the pumpkin orange and that type of thing. So that's something we'll get at, too, as a still life. And then here's the other one that I'm working on. It's a companion piece, a little bit less um, difficult, uh, but I haven't finished it yet. I still need to do some blending in here on the pumpkin itself. I need to put in a ground for the pumpkin. So those are some of the pieces that I've been working on. Now, if you really want to get into doing some more drawing and learning some techniques that you can pick up, I'm going to recommend this book for you. Um, it's phenomenal. It's got some really good tips and tricks. Some things I haven't even had a chance to try yet, but it's really a beautifully well-written book. It's a newer book. Um, here they're showing you different things that you can do, um, taking from your picture and that type of thing. It. What's nice about this book is it does go into the gauchets if you want to use that instead of the gel pencil. It goes into inks. It goes into colored pencils. It goes into pastels. So it covers a wide variety of different techniques on paper, which is nice. So that's something that I would recommend as well. Now in the next section, I'm going to be going over with you the reasons that I recommend doing a graphite for every picture. I'll be right back with you with that segment. Hello, in this segment we're going to talk about the reasons that I do recommend that you do a graphite. The first one I already mentioned and that is you then have a completed project that you can spray with your fixative and sell as a completed item other than just your completed piece. So you've got two pieces from one design, which is nice. The other thing that really uh, works good with a graphite is it helps you work out different questions that you have to answer when you're doing your project. Where's your light source coming from? This one is is fairly simple. It's, it's pretty obvious to me. The light source is coming from here. Light travels in a straight line. Um, so as your light comes in from this direction, it's going to hit this petal, or this leaf, sepal actually, sepal, uh, this petal, this one, which is very, very light, and then here. It also picks up the stem here. You do have a little bit of reflected light that's coming around 
hitting it here on this sepal. Um, so to me, the light source on this project was very simple. At times, it may not be that simple by looking at the photograph. So that, again, is where the graphite is going to help you decide where your light source is going to be by working out this um, graphite design. And then you want to go through step by step each item in the design. This is a cylinder, so I have to create my values. And a cylinder is round. This is just a long cylinder. You've got a light value, the next value, and on up until the darkest value over here, and of course underneath here at the bulb. And then this is our darker side, so these are going to be your darker values. So each item, you have to decide, is that a cylinder, is that a round? What type of an item is this? And by doing the graphite, you are going to become very familiar. Every time you trace this um, design and put it on something and then sketch it in, that makes your mind so much more precise as to what this design is really made of. For example, let's look at this petal right here. It's difficult to tell from the photograph is this petal actually going around the back and I did make it so it does go around the back because as I look at this with my magnifying glass yes it is and that's important to decide before you start to paint you don't want to be making those decisions while you have wet paint on your paper because a decision needs to be made quickly and if you make the wrong one now you've got a mistake that you have to correct so by doing the graphite, you're going to create answers to those types of questions as you go. Um, and as I said, it makes you very familiar with your design. Uh, it, it gets in your mind. The more you trace it, the more you think about it, the more you look at it and decide, is that a cylinder? Is that a uh, ball or a sphere? What type of uh, element is that? So... It's going to make it more familiar with your mind. It also works, it's going to work out a plan of attack once you get to the watercolor paper. Because at this point then, once I've got the graphite done, I'm going to be looking at each petal individually. And you want to start, if I'm right-handed, so I'm going to start in the upper left. It would be the reverse if you're left-handed. And I'm going to work down. And each time I do, and I want to do that with graphite too, just simply because you don't want to get this smeared on your paper, so you want to keep your hand out of it as best you can. Um, but each time I look at that petal, which we will do petal by petal, it's going to put it in my mind for when I paint. Okay, I want my highlight right here, I want my mid value, and then my darker value. And that's going to help separate that petal from this petal, that type of thing. And so when you go to your watercolor paper, you're much more familiar with it than if you would have just sketched this and put it on your watercolor paper. All right. I also use my graphites to help me decide my colors. Now, um, I just did a tulip in almost these identical colors. It was a, a peach tulip. A lot of the same colors were used. This one has a little bit different greens to it, so we'll be using a different green when we do go to paint this. But I could also change the colors on this, and doing the graphite is going to help me decide if that's something that I would like to do. Does it lend itself better, the design, to a red rosebud? Does it lend itself to a peach or a pink rosebud? Um, or is this color going to end up being the color that you use? So those are decisions that you can answer as you're doing your graphite because it's going to make you that much more familiar with your design. And then, um, so it does help you work out a plan of attack on your paper. So one thing I do when I'm upstairs, I'm in my basement studio here, uh, when I'm upstairs in front of the TV and I want to do sketching, I will take 
so you can see my dog hair there. Um, my art bin. Let's see if you can get my name and the name in there. Um, and what's nice about this is I keep my pictures, my graphite pencils that I'm going to use, um, tracing paper, all of that right in here. And then if I really feel like I want to sit and instead of watching strictly TV, I can do a sketch right on here and it's going to hold my paper in place. You can get a small board and tape it down with your artist tape. So that's always an option as well. But that's always nice to have available to you. They do make these smaller, but I like the art bin because it holds the items for me. Okay. So in the next segment, then, we're going to go ahead and get started um, with the graphite design. Hello, this is Colleen with Designs of Value Online Art School. So what I've done is I've taken all 12 of my pencils and I made a little square and then I used my blending stick to soften it out and I did use a Kleenex to soften it as well after that so you wouldn't see a lot of the lines. And since there's 12 pencils in this set, I don't want to have 12 pencils and be going through 12 pencils each time I need one. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've chosen four. And this one is actually the 4B, so that'll be my darkest. We do have some fairly dark areas in here and over here and some more over here and down here. So um, that way what's nice with the 4B is I do, if I still need to have another darker one, I still have two left in my hip pocket I can go to if I need to. And then, this one is a 3B. So 4B and 3B I chose. And then I chose 3H, which will be our lightest, and then 2H. And if I need to go lighter, I still got that, and I've got my erasers got my gel pen so I think we're good to go. I would recommend that you would do this with your set as well. Just simply it's much easier to pick out four or five pencils whatever you want and uh, rather than to have all 12 of them sitting there wondering which one it is you need. So I would recommend that you do this. It also gives you a, a good idea of what the values are for each one and you can take a look at those. I'm going to actually drop down to the 3H to do the entire petal, which is our lightest pencil. Now you can take any pencil, 2H, 3H, whatever, and go over it and go over it and go over it and create your values. But that's what you want with your charcoal pencils. But is to uh, not have to do that. This is really, really nice to just be able to pick up a lighter pencil, lighter value pencil, and then not have to continuously go over and over to get the dark values that you want. This just works out so much better. Now this also is going to be considered a cylinder. And since the light value is coming in from over here and going this direction, your cylinder, again, the light's going to follow the outside line of the design that it sits on or the pedal that it sits on. So you want that highlight to curve as it comes down. So that's the first highlight. Now, I 
I'm going to drop down to the 2H and see if that's going to be dark enough. I think it should be because this is not a dark petal. I got some pencil lines in here to kind of give me an idea of where my dark values fall. And of course this side of a cylinder is going to be darker. So right up against the line of that it will be darker. And up here on the right hand side And as it sits down up against these other items, it's darker. Okay, now we're probably going to have to add some more darks in those corners, but that's a good start. So let's go ahead and use the blending stick, soften this in. And on this light soft petal, we don't need to do a lot of pressure, because the more pressure you use with these blending tools, the darker that graphite gets. but I do like to get rid of those pencil lines, so I always use a blending tool to soften those lines out. Try to stay away from that highlight as best I can. See how the highlight bends to match the petal? That's what you want. Follow the outside line of design of that item that you're trying to create. Now I am going to go darker and grab our 3B. That's our next dark item. There it is. And just in the corners. It's not real dark up here, but we want to separate it here. And again, like I said, you don't want a dark line all the way up and down because that doesn't look realistic. But in these corners, you want to darken it and then blend them out. Just gently doing that mid value because I don't want that to get lost in there. But I don't want the pencil marks in there either. See how it gets a little fatter in the center? That's what you want to create that bulge. Now I'm going to, there's a couple lines that I put in here that I don't like showing through. So I'm going to just remove those with my eraser. That's why I like these erasers so well. You can get right into those little sections and get out what you want to get out without disrupting the entire design. Okay. 
So you always want to kind of sit back and look at your petal when it's when you're done blending with your blending stick and decide if you need any more highlights, do you need any more mid-value, do you need any more darks. If something looks flat to you as you're doing this or even when you're painting, first thing you want to check is your darks. Is it dark enough? The next thing you want to look at is your highlights. Does it have enough highlights in it? That is more than likely what the issue is. It's either not dark enough or it's not light enough. And that's what will create a flatness to an item. So if I had done this all in one value here, then it wouldn't twist back and come forward. So it's either the darks need to be darker or the lights need to be lighter. One or the other. So that's the first thing you always want to look at if you're not sure what's wrong with it is look at those two items first because you're more than likely going to correct the flatness. Now that's fairly light. So I'm going to drop back down to my 2H. Especially this area right here is fairly light because it's against that dark. So this is part of our center of interest. Don't forget. This and this and this is all our center of interest. The center of interest is not just one item. It is an area of the design. So you always want to keep that in mind. With a rose or another flower, they're always soft petals, some of them are see-through petals. So every flower has its own style to it, I guess. Kind of like us as humans, we all have our own style. Some of us wear dresses, some of us wear pants, some of us culottes, whatever. But these guys do too. We want to try to create that illusion again. Another thing you want to think about when you're doing designs, if you don't have a photograph or if you have a couple different photographs that you're working from, and you want to make sure that the leaves that you're adding to that design are the leaves for that flower. You don't ever want to do, this would be an extreme example, a rosebud like this and then put a tulip leaf with it. That would not be appropriate and it would look really strange. Um, anybody that knows flowers at all would know that's not the correct leaf for a rose, is that tulip leaf. So, But some of them are a little bit more subtle, a um, little bit more difficult to, like a rose leaf. They're, they're pretty, pretty standard. They're pretty much the same. Some of them are shiny, some of them are not. But beyond that, they're shaped pretty much the same. They have their little edges that are sharp and pointed and that type of thing. I'm going to put a little bit more of the mid-value in here. So I don't have enough graphite. but um, So just make sure that you have the same leaf for that flower. Just doesn't look right if you have the wrong leaf. Thank you. 
All right, let's put in the highlights here. Now, in looking at this photograph, we've got a highlight that comes across here, and that's, and then also around here. That's pretty much the highlight that we have on this petal. I'm just going to have it trail down there like that. Now what this did by me doing that made me realize, <clears throat> excuse me, that I need to set this down a little bit more, and that's that top. So we're going to go ahead and add a little dark up there just to separate that petal a little bit more. There we go. That looks better. Okay. And I want to... Create a petal a ruffle here. So by setting that in on both sides of that highlight there, blending it out creates that ruffle again, just like up here. But you want it to kind of continue in the painting or the graphite so that it looks like they belong there, even though they're not really there. Okay. Smoothing it in a little bit. Okay. I'm going to darken that bottom a little bit more, too. It's not quite as dark doesn't look like it's sitting down like it should. So now... I am going to take my 3H, which is the next value up, and I'm going to just go over two-thirds of the right-hand side here probably a little bit more than that, maybe three-fourths. I want this to stay lighter. Of course, that's the lightest. So we're just building the darks as we go. This one's going to have reflected light. And like I said before, if I was going to paint this, which we will, I will do that in a this reflected light in the, all of the reflected lights. There's going to be a little bit of blue. Reflected light always has a little bit of blue. Just makes it look more realistic like what's really going on. Now here I'm just going to outline that top petal. And it kind of helps my mind's eye too as I'm doing this to see where that sepal goes. You know, that was kind of getting lost there, so I wanted to be sure and separate that out right there. That's better. This is our darkest area of the design right here. So I think I'm going to take my 4H and deepen, or 4B, I'm sorry, and deepen that one more time just to be safe. So we really want that to be dark. Just gently blend it out on the edge. You don't need to blend out the inside because that's where you want it to be the darkest, so just the edge. And this was an area that I wanted to be sure and capture that dark, and I did. There's a nice dark in here to create that center, but I can see 
way in here. It should be a little bit darker too. Create those petals a little bit better. That brought that out a little bit more. Blend this out a little bit better. It's always something. You could go do this for hours. But we're going to call this completed. And by me doing this graphite of this rosebud, it has taught me in my mind's eye what I want to do with my rose when I'm painting it. Where my values are going to be, where my highlights are going to be, uh, all my darks, and it's really going to help me understand this rosebud as a watercolor painting now. And again, as I said earlier, this is a completed piece. I'll just have to spray it. I've got about four of them I want to spray. And I can sell this. So, thank you for watching this today. I hope that I've taught you some good things. And I'll see you again soon.